Hello everybody, this is Dr. Carlo Oyer, Board Certified Emergency Physician with DrER.TV. This video contains graphical images of lacerations and blood, so if you get squeamish or anything, don't watch. This is Dr. Carlo Oyer, Board Certified Emergency Physician with DrER.TV. If you're watching this video, you're probably at ED Exit Video Pro, where I post educational videos specifically for the healthcare enthusiast, medical student, nurse, young doctors, even all the doctors who just want to learn more. The other day I had this pediatric patient who presented after an electric injury. He put his hand on a ca oh, he was had his hand on a uh, iPhone cable that was partially uh, uncovered from the rubber and he sustained an electric shock type injury. He had a history of cardiac disease, so that's why the EKG looks like a right bundle branch block. And by that I mean you can see that the QRS is a little bit widened, like that, and not look like the normal beautiful QRS, like it's much more narrow, right? So it's a wide QRS, has a right bundle branch block pattern. But what I was more, more concerned about was this here, that you can see that this space between these is pretty symmetric and short and then all of a sudden there is a longer interval longer interval longer interval so the difference between the shorter and longer intervals is uh, maybe 40 percent almost 50 percent more and that concerned me as this was a very pronounced form of sinus arrhythmia sinus arrhythmia is the arrhythmia that you get from inspiration and expiration in normal patients so it, it made me think hmm this is something I need to be worried about. When should I worry about it? And do I need to do a workup for something like this? So if you know the answer, just stop watching the video. But if you don't know the answer, or you want to make sure you know, then keep watching. Hey, my name is Dr. Carlo, and I'm saying hi from working uh, in the emergency department, 24 hour shift today, doing a video right here for you. Anyway, let's talk about sinus arrhythmia. So sinus arrhythmia, it's commonly encounter variation of normal sinus rhythm. So normal sinus is like clockwork. Every QRS happens at the exact same time, like clockwork. Sinus arrhythmia characteristically presents with an irregular rate in which the variation of the RR interval is greater than 0.12 seconds. So that's the definition of sinus arrhythmia. When the RR interval, the difference between the shortest and longer is more than 0.12 seconds. Sinus arrhythmia is a common rhythm variation. It is seen more often in children and young adults. Respirations lead to vagal stimuli. Here is the reason why. Resulting in RR interval variations. Typically, its presence is an indicator of good cardiovascular health. So it's not really a problem. It's actually a good thing. Loss of sinus arrhythmia may indicate underlying heart failure or structural heart disease. So the lack of sinus arrhythmia is bad, uh, but it's normal in children and young adults. But my question was, is sinus arrhythmia that is too prolonged or too big? Is it abnormal? Is it a bad thing? So let's keep looking. So I keep searching the internet or interweb for answers. Sinus arrhythmia overview. This is a very good overview with a very nice EKG example of the narrow QRS, 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 and the longer intervals. So sinus rhythm with a beat-to-beat -beat variation of the PP interval. Uh, that's what's called sinus arrhythmia. More than 120 milliseconds or three small boxes. The PP interval gradually lengthens and shortens with cyclical fashion, usually correspond to the phases of the respiratory cycle. So you actually would have to watch the patient breathe, and when they breathe in, it accelerates, and when they breathe out, it slows down. Breathe in, and breathe out, it expands. Normal sinus P wave with a constant morphology, so the P's look the same. And the QRS is so look the same because if you don't, if they look different, this is another kind of arrhythmia. Could it be ectopic atrial rhythm? Could it be sick sinus uh, syndrome? Could it be multifocal atrial tachycardia or bradycardia or something like that? Constant PR intervals. So there's no evidence of Mobitz type 1 or other kinds of AB blocks. So that's the important thing that when you see something like this, you got to make sure it's not some other kind of dysrhythmia. But I love to memorize names and things to impress people later with my 
awesome brain and <laughs> my 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 ability to learn a little name so i like this one the bainbridge reflex i learned that when i was a resident i managed to impress a couple attendings with that just imagine there are two veins and and and, and they're creating a bridge bainbridge i know it doesn't spell vein like a vein but it sounds like vein so a bridge of veins the reflex or bridge of veins so i imagine that the qrs is wide and then narrow and then in between that there's a, a bridge of veins and that's how I memorize vein bridge reflex so the vein bridge reflex occurs when the heart rate increases in response to atrial pressure increase this is a compensatory mechanism since increased right atrial pressures frequently result from elevated left heart pressures from decreased cardiac output elevating the heart rate should increase cardiac output so one way they do this in anesthesia and things like that is if you get about bowls of fluids you give a psh, and then the heart increases the rate so you can do this physiologically by taking a deep breath when your chest expands it basically suctions and pulls blood from the periphery into the central venous system and increases basically the preload it increases the amount of fluid in the atrium and therefore can make the heart rate um, a little faster the bain bridge reflex acts in opposition to the carotid barrier receptor reflex and increases the heart rate when stretched sinus arrhythmia may be explained by bain bridge reflex as venous return increases during inhalation causing a brief increase in heart rate so bain bridge reflex explains sinus arrhythmia so that's a good thing to know so imagine that bridge of veins in between the long and short parts of the QRS to QRS complex and here's another example R R R R longer pause R R R R longer pause so this is sinus arrhythmia that's what we learned today it's defined as a prolongation of more than 0 0.12 seconds or three small boxes and it can be explained by the bridge of veins, vein bridge reflex, which essentially says if you give more preload to the heart, the heart rate will increase. You can do this by inspiration, the heart rate accelerates, and you expirate, the heart rate slows down. So that's what I found out doing my research into finding out why this kid had a very pronounced uh, Bainbridge reflex or a sinus arrhythmia and after consultation with a pediatric cardiologist he said yeah I'm not worried about it it's fine and the kid went home without any further workup without any blood work or things like that so most people with a sinus arrhythmia they don't need a workup they are fine the lack of a sinus arrhythmia well, that might mean something or a very pronounced sinus arrhythmia in elder patients that might mean something so if you see a pronounced sinus arrhythmia make sure you're not confusing with a Mobitz type 1 or any other kind of AV block hey guys I hope you learned a lot in this video uh, I hope to see you again soon please post your comments about this video whether you like the format where you learn something or not ever seen something like this in a patient and we'll see you in our next video bye bye